Hi guys and welcome back to That Office Guy and today I'm going to show you guys how you can stop using the Microsoft Excel filters and use a very simple filter formula instead. This is actually a super powerful function that allows you to, you know, filter your data without the needs of actually uh, going through each individual column uh, and applying those filters. So if you do find this video useful and informative, then do go ahead and hit that subscribe and like button for me. It really does mean a lot to the channel. Um, and with that said, let's jump on over to the, uh, you know, Microsoft Excel desktop and take a look at just what's going on and how to do this um, for Microsoft Excel. So here we are just within uh, Microsoft Excel and uh, what I've done is I've actually set up um, a couple of things. Over here we have um, you know, a very basic data table. We've got a list of names, the locations, um, some purchase quantities and some sold quantities. And what we're going to do is we want to filter this data very easily um, just using a filter function rather than actually applying filters on here. So what you might be used to is, you know, coming in here, selecting your headers and then going ahead onto the data tab and clicking the filter button. Then you can obviously filter this data down by an individual. Let's say we wanted to filter by Nick and here we go. Problem is obviously then you might say, okay, well only show me where the numbers are greater than, let's say five. Okay. And it shows you that as well. The problem here is you're going through multiple steps to do it and you can obviously make this a little bit more efficient. So I'm just going to remove those filters and show us that raw data table again. Uh, and this time what I've done is I've set up this little example over here. Okay, so in example one, we're just going to create a very simple function just to filter by the name. And I'm going to get all of the, uh, all of basically Nick out of this data table here and it's going to spill into, into this section. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and type equals and then type filter. Okay, with this being done, it gives us a bit of a, an indication of what it's looking for. It's looking for the array. Okay, and the array is basically your data table. Okay, so I can just quickly select all of that. Shortcuts, you can obviously just click the first cell, control shift um, to the right, and then control shift down, and that will also select it. Um, but once you have your array there, you can obviously hit uh, F4, which will then obviously put in those absolute values, not necessary, um, but uh, you know, I'll leave it blank for now, but it's a nice easy tip there if you want to. We can go ahead and hit comma, and then it's looking for what it's looking, you know, what you're gonna filter this data set by, right? So it's called include. So what we're going to do is we're going to include a set of criteria here to filter our data set. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to select the entire column here of names, okay? And then we're gonna go equals in double quotations, we're gonna type Nick, okay? And obviously we have to make sure that um, this is spelled exactly as the data uh, is in the table. So this is a very basic example. I'm gonna actually run through several ways to make this easier for you, but this is the basic filter formula, okay? Uh, I can hit comma again, and it shows us what to do if it cannot find Nick within our data set. So a double quotation there basically says, leave it blank. I can then close that off with a parentheses, and ultimately we can just look back at this formula briefly. Here we can see that we have a array or the entire table of data. We know that we want to filter column A from A5 to A29 um, everywhere when the name Nick appears. And if it cannot find Nick, then we want to basically to return nothing. Okay, so if I go ahead and press return on that, it will then spill this out into all of the columns and rows, as many as needed to fill um, you know, that filter criteria. So there are two records with Nick, um, and we can see you know, that they're both in the UK location. Uh, we had the sales quantity, or sorry, the purchase quantity of 12 and nine, sold quantity of five and four. So straight away, we can just go ahead and find, there's the first record right there. We can shoot down here and we can see that second record there. We can also see that there is no other nicks here. And obviously if we wanted to double check, we can go ahead and apply those filters and search um, and just filter that down to nick. So there we go, we can see that there are those two records that were found. So that's a very basic way of using the filter function uh, without the need to you know, actually go ahead and uh, apply loads of different filters. Obviously, if we move on to our second criteria, our second example here, in this example, we're going to look at how to use more than one criteria within our filter. 
Okay, so we're going to open this up again and we're going to go ahead and type filter. This time we're going to get that array, which again is going to be the same as before. We're going to just select that entire data set, that table there. We're going to hit comma and we're going to include. We're going to include, um, first of all, we're going to actually open up another bracket just inside our filter function here. And then we're going to include the entire name column. And this time we say equals in quotations Nick. Okay. And then we'll um, close a bracket at that point there. So it's kind of like uh, you're wrapping each criteria within its own set of brackets, okay? Then uh, we're gonna hit a, a multiplication and an asterisk, okay? And um, so within the filter formula, uh, this basically allows us to use a multiple criteria, okay? So it's not actually multiplying anything. It's just the way to say, we're gonna do this particular piece of criteria and then we're going to use the um, asterisk to say, and we want a second criteria. So we're going to open up another bracket for that second piece of criteria. And this time we're going to say, okay, show me everything within the purchase quantity where it is greater than, let's say, five. Okay. And then we'll just close that one in its own set of, uh, you know, param uh, you know, brackets. Uh, and here we can see that we now have two pieces of criteria, right? So we have our initial data set that is from A5 to D29, we can see that we're looking for Nick in column A between A5 and A29. Okay, and we can see that we have that asterisk as when there's a second criteria, the second criteria can be found in column C between C5 and C29. And we're saying it has to be greater than five. Okay, we can hit a comma and then say what happens if it cannot find a Nick with a criteria of purchases over five. Well, we want nothing to return. So we'll just put a double quotation there, close the bracket and press return. And again, it shows us those two criteria uh, or those two records that were found. Now, obviously we can see that um, the purchases actually started at nine and 12. So let's say we want it to be greater than nine. We'd come back into that first formula and notice how all of these ones are grayed out within our formula bar. There's a master formula here. Uh, and obviously these are just spilled out as needed. So we want to make sure we always click it back into that first formula. And at the top here, we're going to change our criteria within that column C range, rather than being greater than five, we're going to change it to being greater than nine. If I hit return on that, we only get the one record being shown um, for Nick. Okay. And that's because 12 is greater than nine, but nine is not greater than nine. Okay. If we wanted that to be included, we could say um, it's uh, greater than or equals to or equal to nine and it would return. Um, but we're just going to leave that as a greater than nine. So there it's no longer pulling through. So quite simple and you can add as many criteria as needed. Okay, so um, you can just continuously do that by adding in the asterisks. But of course, you know, that's quite, you know, a long winded way about doing it. Obviously, if you just wanted to filter your data in this particular way, you will be forever having to change and adapt that formula. So that brings us to the third example. In the third example, we're actually going to go ahead and create some drop down menus that allow us to filter our data for us. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just create a, a new row here. Okay, and uh, in this particular first box, just above the first name, um, we're going to create a list of unique values of out of the names, and then we're going to include that in a drop down list. So the first thing that we need to do is actually create a new tab called lookups. Here we can see I have all of the names, the locations, sales value, uh, so it's purchase quantities, and sold quantities. And from here, we can see that this is actually a formula that's spilling out. It's a unique formula. Okay, the unique formula allows us to pull out all the unique names inside a column. Okay, so if we add a new name, it will also appear in here. And that's important because when we start using this particular um, you know, column as a lookup value in a drop down menu, we want that drop down menu to be able to be dynamic. Now, I'm not going to go through this formula in detail, but it's very, very basic. You just go equals unique, find your data. You want it to be false and false to make sure you bring back uh, unique values. Okay, so with that done, we can actually go back to our third example here, go to that data tab and go over to data verification. From data verification, we can go ahead and follow our drop down menu, click on list. From the list, we can go to the source. The source is now our lookups tab and we're going to select the list of names. Now, if you're going to be adding additional names, you might want to give it a little bit of room here. I'm just going to select all the names I actually have, but feel free to expand that if you need to. I'm just going to go ahead and click OK 
And now I have a drop down list of names. So I can now filter by all of these people's names as needed. Uh, if I wanted to do the same for the location, I could do that as well. Uh, and likewise, I'm gonna leave these as open number fields. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and do a data verification, go to list, choose the source from my lookups table, the three locations, and I'm gonna click okay. And then here we can obviously see all the various locations. So now we're ready to build that third example of a filter lookup. This time we're gonna go equals a filter. We're gonna open up a bracket here. We're going to find the entire table of data that we want. We're going to include everything inside our column A where it equals our drop down menu from here. So G4. Okay, we're gonna hit comma um, and I'm going to basically close off uh, with a double quotations if it's not found and then close the bracket. Now that's just a simple one criteria um, filter, but as I change the name from here, it's updating my filters as needed. So now I'm filtering based on a drop down menu rather than having to apply filters to a direct data set. The benefit of this means that I can have a complete summary table somewhere and I can always be filtering exactly to what I need whenever I need it to be done, um, rather than having to go to the data source itself and apply filters there. It's just another nice way to kind of have some summary tabs. Okay, and obviously we can apply multiple different levels to this. So for example, if we come back into this formula and we wrap our first criteria within its own set of brackets and we apply an asterisk, we can go ahead and open the second criteria. In this example, I'm just gonna use purchases again. Okay, so I'm gonna select that entire column there. Um, and this time I'm going to go with uh, it's greater than or equal to, and I'm gonna go with whatever is in um, column I. And I'm gonna close that bracket and I will then press return. So again, this time it's still showing me all of the records because that particular field there is black. But if I were to go ahead and say, okay, show me anything that is equal to or greater than 10, it will then filter that down for me and show me that one set of records. So for a very, very simple way to basically summarize your data or review your data um, using a filter function. But obviously there's many other functions that uh, are very similar to this that allow you to do filtering and you know some other additional action such as DSUM, which is fantastic. So they do recommend checking those out as well. But let's go ahead and look at a fourth way of doing this. And this is the more preferred way. So in this example, I have uh, obviously all of my filters in here already, uh, my drop down menus. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to convert this um, table into, uh, or this set of data into an Excel table, because that allows us to do things slightly more dynamically. So I'm going to go back to the home tab here, and I'm just going to select any cell that has data inside this data table. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the format as table. From here, I'm going to go ahead and find a, a format style that I prefer. I like the black and white version. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. I'm going to make sure that my table has headers. It's important to note that your headers have to be unique values here. Uh, you don't want the same um, column header, uh, you know, repeated multiple times. You just want unique values where possible. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. That now has converted that into an Excel table, which basically means I can now actually reference these column names a lot more efficiently. So let's take a look at our filter function under this particular set of circumstances. So if we go to equals and we go to filter and we open up a bracket here, from here we can see that we have that array, right? What do we want? Well, if I come over to the far left-hand side here, we can see a diagonal arrow appear. If I click on that, it will then tell me it's table one. Obviously, if I give this uh, table a custom name, which I can do from inside the table uh, dialog box um, or the contextual tab within the ribbon, then you, know, you can give it a very specific name and you could find it there. So we're going to basically include all of our table one data inside our filter. So straight away, it's much easier to read. It also means that you do not have to worry about ranges dropping out. It will be dynamic as you add rows to your table it'll also add, add those rows into your filter. So I'm going to go ahead and click on um, comma here. Now we want to include, so we're going to use a two criteria again. So I'm going to go ahead and open a bracket. This time I'm going to come over to the um, name section here. And again, I get that, dial, that, that downward arrow just appear up here when I hover above the the header of that particular column. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and it's gonna show me that it's table one first name. Okay, and that name has to equals our um, drop down menu option, which is in G4. 
So straight away, this becomes very easy to read um, from a human point of view. So we have table one, we have table one first name, which is that column, and we want that to, that to basically be the same uh, or filtering down to whatever is inside our cell of G4. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. Okay, that's our first criteria. So it's wrapped in its own set of brackets. We're then going to use the asterisk um, and open up a new bracket. This time, we're going to go ahead and go over to our purchase quantity. I'm going to make sure I have that arrow appear just above the, the header name, and I'm going to click that. That's then going to show me that it's table one, purchase quantity. And I'm going to want to make sure that this is greater than or equal to whatever is inside our purchase quantity here at I4. Okay, and then I'm going to head and close that as well. Then I'm going to hit comma and just go ahead and make sure I have that double quotation at the end there because I want a blank to be returned if um, it cannot find anything at all. And then I want to close that bracket and press return. Now we have a dynamic formula that's going to continue to grow with your data set. So as you add rows into your table, it will automatically be able to filter those new rows as well. So it's a really good way, guys, to make your formulas a lot more dynamic. Obviously, we still have our ability to filter by the names in these drop down menus. We can change quantities um, as well, and obviously, that will dynamically adjust what we're filtering by. So, it's a really fantastic feature, guys, that allows you to really dynamically enhance your Excel documents. So, I do recommend that you all guys, um, you know, you do check it out because it does change um, so many ways of working within Microsoft Excel. So, hopefully, you found this video useful and informative. If you did, then do go ahead and hit that like button for me. I really do appreciate it. And if you um, want to be kept up to date with all the various hints and tips and various formulas and functions that we do here at uh, you know that office guy, then do go ahead and subscribe. By subscribing, you'll be kept up to date with all the various videos and live streams that we do here um, at that office guy. So with all that said, well, I hope everyone has a fantastic day and I'll catch you all in the next one.